Come on, Chi. It's going.
Welcome, Cougar fans, to another edition of Cougar Hockey. My name is Casey Kitchelinski. Luke Clevenger just finished up the uh, lineups and anthem, and he'll be over here. So you won't have to hear much more of me until uh, I give a little detail for the color stuff. Uh, but we have game two tonight between SIUE and McKendry. SIU took last night's game three to two, scoring late on a Lucas Tucker power play goal. Uh, other goal scorers were Kane Henson shorthanded, and Blake Tech Majin led the led the night off with the goal in the first period. Justin Nosser had an incredible game last night, stopped a couple two on O's, multiple breakaways, and we'll get the night off today, and we'll see freshman Caleb Curry as the Cougars win the draw. Here is Braden Rowe. Rowe over to Wagner. Wagner, along the near boards, gets his pack, pass picked off by Kendry as they dump it in his own. Marshall gives chase, tries to tip it past the McKendry defense, can't. But it looks like Rowe will be there to support and get it out. Here's Gay for McKendry. He loses the puck in the corner, and Christian Perry picks up. And a little scrum. Puck comes back to Rowe on the point. Rowe sends one. Blocked awkwardly by the McKendry forward, and he goes down. The puck goes out of play. 31 seconds into the game. We really have no stats to tell you about because nothing's hit the net. Here's the draw. Here's Joe Watson for the Cougars. They lose it. Looks like Tucker gives chase. Can't quite win it, but Daly is on it. And McKendry gains possession, and they'll try to exit from behind their net. A pass out to Dembski. They couldn't connect. Wagner collects and sends it back in. Watson over to Tucker. Tucker's pass is deflected to Northrop, and he'll clear the zone. And Rowe does well to... Stop an oncoming McKendry entry. And the Cougars couldn't quite get it on side. And they'll they'll regroup in a neutral zone. Wagner to his defensive partner, his goal scorer last night, Kane Henson. Drew Paris along the near boards. Fights off McKendry forward. Dembski. Now here's Kane Henson in a battle in the corner. He'll pick up and look to break out. He will lose it, but to a teammate, and they'll send it down the ice. No icing called. McKendry will go back and retrieve it. And they'll wrap it around the wall. All the way into Cougars. We'll look to break out again. Here is Kyle Kullerberg. Sets up shop behind Caleb Curry. Cully over to Henson. Henson looks for a long stretch pass for Parabet, but he cannot retrieve that pass. Here is Henson again. Coming out of the zone, zone loses the puck, and McKendry will try and cut in the zone. Here is Nelson. Nelson. Gets in across his own. Big hit by Henson as he sends his man flying into the corner. McKendry still with possession. They throw one on net. Tipped wide. And it looks like Luke's back and is going to bail me out as soon as he sits down. Uh, and McKendry will dump it back in the Culbert. Here's Luke. Well, I, you know, I just bailed you out there with, uh, what, three minutes gone in the first period? I think they were done listening to me. They're probably all on mute. Oh, you still got 15 of them watching. Come on now. Yeah, it's in the background. It's on a different tab. <laughs> hey, can you do me a favor and hand me that uh, that uh, lineup sheet over there? That kind of is important. Is of course, the Cougars looking to complete the sweep after the big victory last night at McKendry by a score of 3-2. to two. Now, Casey, I couldn't make it to that game. You made it to that game. What did you see? I saw the Cougars look look to play down a little bit. They have a lot of they have a lot of talent on their team, and it looked like uh, they they just looked a little lethargic. Uh, the shots were relatively close at about I want to say 32-29. Uh, McKendry had a lot of chances, but a lot of them came on the rush and were a result of some defensive breakdowns. As far as uh, serious pressure, that was really all SIU. They had points in the second, especially in the second periods when they picked up their game. Probably put on 15 to 17 shots in that period, and a lot of it was mounds and mounds of pressure, minutes at a time, in McKendry zone. And a lot of the McKendry pressure came on either power plays or on on-man rushes where uh, pucks weren't held in by the point men and uh, defensive uh, marks weren't made. So the key to today's game to be one of the big keys for the Cougars is going to be keeping your head cool. Like you said, they had a lot of chances on the power play opportunity as now Technasium skates it into the offensive zone. Sigurig pass now. Backhanded shot. It'll be redirected by Curry. Breaks it back out now. The Cougars across the line. That's Christian Perry. He's dangerous. Fight space. Backhanded shot wide. And it's going to be deflected off from behind the net and picked up to the near point. 
That's Chris Wagner playing on the second pairing tonight, according to my sheet, and shooting it wide from the near point, and the buckle roll behind the net, fielded by the Bearcats. Anyway, as I was saying, though, uh, I think one of the keys here is going to be to be disciplined. You said they got a lot of their shots last night on the power play. As here go the Kidry Bearcats off an interception, backhanded shot wide of Curry. It uh, They got a lot of their shots off of, off of power plays, and these two teams really don't like each other, right? Like, they, this is this is the, the biggest rivalry that SAUE has. So keeping uh, keeping your cool in such a, such a close game, such an intense game, it is going to be paramount to success here. For sure, yeah. Both these teams, are, yeah. Dislike is a uh, it's very generous uh, of uh, of the uh, amount of hatred between these two teams. Hold on here now as a cross pass through the slot area to Lucas Tucker gets broken up going the other way. Now McKidry up across the red line, dumped in down the lake through the ice. That will be fielded by Braden Rowe. Rowe grabs the puck, deals it over back and forth behind the net as the Cougars look to get the puck out of the zone. No, say the Bearcats. They'll dump it right in. That'll be Derek Northrop on the puck. It'll be fielded by the Cougars. Cougars now going the other way. It's Trevor Daly. Daly finds a little space. Shot save made by the Goldie Mason. I got to say, the last night, I, the Cougars had many, many chances, and a lot of it was just built off of just simple plays. But it, a lot of the times, like we saw earlier here with uh, the Wagner giveaway, a lot the McKendry would cash in at least a lot of their opportunities on defensive miscues by the Cougars. So if they can just clean up their game, especially stay disciplined, I think the Cougars can dictate the play here. Shot off the faceoff by Kohlberg, and it's going to go wide into the far corner. Played out by the Bearcats into the neutral zone. It's going to roll into the offensive no zone now. That's number nine, Derek Northrop chasing after it. Broken out and played forward by the SIUB Cougars. Cougars find a man in Terrence Kerbot. No, that's Kate Henson. Henson across the blue line. He's going to lose control of the puck and poke it to the far corner. You're saying, though, I, I mean, dislike is a very generous term. I know the Cougars, you know, they circle a couple games on the schedule, but both of these are, are ones going into the season. You know, these are the ones they want to win. Yeah, it's huge, especially this uh, this proximity battle here. This is the next university. Across, it's, you know, it's separated by uh, one highway. It's about a 20, 30 minute drive between the two schools. Uh, a lot of kids either go to McKendry or go to SIU from the, from the local area. And this is the this is pretty much the team that that we used to see in a lot of D2 uh, that other D2 teams would have. It would be teams make, composed of local high school players. You have your occasional kid from out of town. Well, oh, hold on here. Steps up now from the near corner and shot wide, as you were saying. And a lot of these a lot of these players have played against each other in in other fashions or played with each other in high school. So a lot of the a lot of the hatred over the years and it's been since uh, we started playing McKendry. I want to say in 2000. And, Five maybe. Uh, it's it's dated back to then when there's been a lot of uh, a lot of knowledge between the two teams of, of the players against each other, and you really want to just take it to the your buddy that's on the other team. All right. Well, an interception there by Terrence Purebot is going to get mishandled and played to a man in the neutral zone. That's Davis. Davis plays it up to his near man. That's Nelson. Nelson loses control of it. Going to roll over to the far zone and be played into. And mishandled into the hands of the Bearcats. Bearcats played up to Grasso. Grasso dumps it in. That's going to go all the way over to Chris Wagner in the far corner. Now played along the boards behind the goal of Curry. Wasn't Drake in Grasso? Or that was Degrassi. Uh, you're thinking of Degrassi. Yeah. Degrassi high. You know, I never, I never got into that. I, just, I think I was a little too young for that. I see a lot of – I'm way older than you. I, I never watch it either. Oh saw yeah, a lot of tweets about that. <laughs> that. That you want to admit as they play it up to Gray and along the near the boards, fires wide. And here go the Cougars the other way. Shot off the skate. It's going to be played the other way now by Golvoko. Shot on, save made by Curry. As the puck will roll over to Gay along the near boards. Gay, shot. They had another save made by Curry. Or perhaps it was deflected purely off the stick of the Bearcat standing right there. Centering pass, can't find a man, and now it'll roll over to the far board played up and out hands up for offsides is SIUE gets a free possession of the puck that's that's the first time within the last night and eight minutes that McKendry had sustained pressure for at least 45 seconds for that's not a power play well uh, McKendry play it takes a lot of pride in, in their hockey program shot save made on a breakout pass there it was almost a chance there for Alec Marshall is now it's going to be whistled dead 
you've got stock and hand passes, you're going to make a lot of money after this game. We've already seen two in the defensive zone tonight. And we're only eight minutes in. It's a, it's a young game so far. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. It, as I was saying, McKinnery takes a lot of pride in their in their hockey program. They got a, a really a new, clean, nice rink that they play in. So uh, I, I'm sure there's a little bit of not just not wanting to lose to the crosstown rivals. Is now a little scruffle in front of the net there of Mason Young. Tack, tack fed there by Perry. Tack was right in almost too close. As a goaltender, you, you almost like those shots as you, the, the shooter has a limited amount of options. So if you can take prioritize low coverage, they're not going to have a lot to shoot at. They're going to have to make a perfect shot to get it over your glove or, in this case, blockers. The other odd thing about McKendry is they have two wrong-handed goaltenders, which I've never seen a team carry two silly siders. But we'll see how it, see how it works, for, works out for them tonight. As McKendry pokes it up into the neutral zone, now that's being played by... Noah Scrum. Scrum loses control. Of it. He's going to hit, tap it back to their defense over to Wolf. Now there are two Wolves. That would be Galton Wolf. Is Bearcats played over to the far boards. Pressure put on by SIUE. Shot wide at the point. That was Henson with the shot. He came up big last night. Had a, quite a few good plays there. As now he's going to play the puck into a defensive zone. He's going to try and dump it down. McKendry says no. Let's take it all the way across. That cross pass knocked yep. down by Christian Perry and into the neutral zone. Got away with too many men right there. The guy, uh, McKendry had the puck near their bench, and they had six men on the ice. Not picked up by the linesman here. Is a errant puck was going to be covered by Mason Young. 11 minutes flat to go here in the period. You know, they, they have so they have Trevor Wolf, they have Dalton Wolf, that's with an E, so no relation, and they also have Wolfgang Davis. I think they just need to field an entire team with guys with the name Wolf in it. Yeah, they, right now I think they're the, the ACHA leaders in, uh, in Wolf. They need to find a Wolf Blitzer and just ask if he can coach a game for, for giggles. And you got to think Wolfgang is incredible at classical music, just given the first name. I mean, you have to, right? Up along the near boards, and it's Joe Watson trying to find a series that's going to be broken up there by Wolfgang Davis. Speak of the devil as he'll play it up along the far boards. Dumped into the neutral zone, but not before it goes into the McKendry bench. 10.31 to go in the first period. I know we talked during the uh, the Bradley game about Nosser kind of having a, a resurgence, and he needed a big game there, and he had a hell of a game against Bradley. He had another one last night, and he's put two back-to-back -back ones together. It looks like we're seeing the the, uh, the Justin Nosser of old, and that's that's a good sign for the Cougars now that Curry's done well in, in all of his starts, and Nosser is getting, getting back to form. To have two goalies that you can throw in at either point should anybody get injured or or whatever the case is, that's it's a great uh, strength for any club team. Is McKendry takes it up along the near boards. That's Dimsky. Dimsky dumpskies it into the offensive zone. That'll be grabbed by number 26, Drew LaRose. LaRose has pressure put on him by Derek Northrop. And he's going to skate it all the way around. Oh, and a bad centering pass. Knuckle puck covered up by Curry. It's another defensive miscue that just can't happen. It's an unforced error that's right up the gut. You, either, if you don't have anything, go up the wall. And that's a fan pass right to uh, McKendry player. Luckily, they fanned on the shot. He didn't look to catch it clean. Came in on Curry. It was tough to handle, and uh, he gets a draw. I just want to point out, uh, when I made the dump ski joke, I got a side eye from you, and our viewer count went down by two at that exact moment. Yeah. So I'm really proud of myself, I got to say. Is the SAE Cougars with the faceoff. That's Watson. Watson over. Can't find a man. Plays it back to Zerlini, and now the puck will roll over to Braden Rowe. Up across, Braden Rowe with the shot. It's going to go wide. That'll be fielded by Drew Paris. Paris looking across for a man. Can't find Terrence Kerbot as the puck will get played up now into the neutral zone. Grabbed by Wagner. Back and forth on the D line and up into the offense, into the neutral zone, excuse me. Goes Wagner. He'll dump it in, and Kendry will go chase. Cougars swap two off the bench. Is the Bearcats pass it to no one in particular along the far boards? Nine minutes remaining in the first period. It's a tie tilt here. 0-0 zero, zero if you're just joining us. It is up across into the offensive zone. Go the Bearcats. Up along the near boards looking for a man to center it to. Can't quite fight it. It's going to be poked around and dealt out. Oh, almost found a home run pass there. Corey Sperry out along the far boards. 
Man goes down, no hands up behind the net now. Is the centering pass? Oh man, what a chance! And a follow up shot by Hinton, save made by Mason Young. That's a great save. That's a missed opportunity with the, with the man wide open in the slide. Looked like that's uh, was that Craig Ford. Why did he just had all kinds of time in the world and it just just missed it? Just went under his uh, went under his stick. I'm sure, you'd like to have that one back, but uh, Mason uh, nevertheless made a good save on the on the point shot. Great opportunity there for the Cougars, but he whiff on one and a uh, great save from Young on the second one. It is now the puck will find its way to Kane Hinson. Shot save made by Young again as the puck will get played to Ford. Ford up to Hinson. Hinson shot, and it's a loose puck in the slot area. It'll get break it, broken out by the Bearcats. Bearcats now play it into the neutral zone. Heads up, and that'll be called all the way down for icing. One thing we saw yesterday is it looks like the coaches changed up the lines a little bit, throw them in a blunder. Um, normally you see Perry with Watson and Tucker, and we saw Perry kind of intermixed with a couple other players. Uh, Tucker ended up, uh, I believe it was, it was uh, well, Watson wasn't with Perry. It was, they were all, all kinds of mixed up. Today it's uh, Daly, Watson, Tucker on the first line, Perry, Technasian, Marshall on the second line. Is if Buck goes to the slot area off the face off Christian Perry trying a little stick handling move there he will do just that as it will get played over along the far boards pairing Perry with Marshall Marshall's a pretty offensively gifted player uh maybe that'll kind of spring him for some uh you know some more offense with, with this line so I don't think Marshall played with him last night. I believe he played on the fourth line so they're looking to get him going I think there's a shot from Perry it'll be covered up easily by the goalie Young that and Marshall, I believe, played with this goaltender Young in at Edwardsville, so you might have a little knowledge of him. So we'll see if that works out to anything. The Edwardsville has four teams, so they may not have, may or may not have played with each other. I'm not <laughs> sure, but I believe they've seen each other at some point at school. I don't know. Took uh, each other's lunch money. I was gonna say maybe not. Edwardsville's about two thousand students. Is now it's going to be shot oh, from the blue line. It's going to go wide to the goalie Young. The kids will play it up into the neutral zone. That's going to be dumped back in by Philip Kolberg. Little Coley plays it over to Perry. Perry along the far boards is now McKendry will dispossess it and they'll dump it into the neutral zone. Grabbed the kid by Kolebert. Pressure put on along the near boards. And the Cougars' defensive zone is now a searing pass. We've seen that searing pass go where it should, but nobody be there several times tonight for the McKendry Bearcats. As now it'll be centered again and cleared out by the Cougars. Thought seems to be ahead of the skill. The mind's in the right place, but it doesn't look like the feet are the feet is, are going to get him in the right place right now. So the puck will roll down the length of the ice. It'll get covered up by Young. Shots on goal, twelve to five in favor of the Cougars. And we were talking about the the offensive lines. Let's talk about the defensive pairings too. Uh, Kane Hinson for the first time this season not paired with Chris Wagner. He's with. Kyle Kohlberg, and then Braden Rowe with Chris Wagner on the second deep area. I wonder if that has anything to do with uh, Coley maybe playing his off his offside. So I know uh, Wagner's a lefty. Having Kane and uh, Wagner kind of complement each other as a right and lefty. Some coaches like that. Maybe they're looking to just change things up a little bit, get a fresh look. A lot of these guys played with each other last year, so they have that familiarity and to have this to have this kind of switch up and not lose much. Is the uh, Cougars play the puck over behind the net into the neutral zone? They'll be picked up by the Bearcats. Bearcats played along the far board. Looks like Dibsky across the line with Poole. Poole loses control of the puck. It's going to go to Davis. Davis is going to fire a shot from center ice. Curry says, hey, no problem. I'll cover that up and I'll play it forward. Now as the Cougars try and break it into the neutral zone. They'll do just that. Here goes Watson to apply pressure near the McKendry bench in the neutral zone. And it'll come across. Who is that? That is number 23. Drew Paris with the shot on goal. Oh, and almost a follow-up chance there by Big T. Here it's Pirabot. We're seeing a lot of juicy rebounds come off the pads of uh, Young here. We'll see if the Cougars cash in on that. Loose puck, but a lot of pressure put on there along the far circle. It's going to be whistled off sides. This is almost saved by Brayden Rowe. Yeah, I want to say about 10 of the 13 shots put on by the Cougars are going low. The 13 inches are below uh, above the ice. Um, and there's there's chances for rebounds at, at every point. Um, one thing you see with some of these goaltenders is the, the use of their stick. They use their stick very well. Pucks are going to go into the corners or go into the netting. Uh, if not, then other, other shots are just going to go. Woo! There's one punched away. Yeah, no kidding. That was punched away off of a rocket wrist shot. It's going to stay in play, though, as now 
Christian Perry plays it up to Kohlberg along the near board. Sets Kohlberg now. Looks down to Perry. He's going to turn it around. Yeah, and if you don't use your stick, chances are that rebound's going to come right out into the slot in an area you don't want it to go. So I'll be played over to Ebersalt. Ebersalt now. Pressure put on. The stepping up is Terrence Pirabot. Pirabot now. Up to hints. No, it's going to be deflected over along the near boards. Five minutes to go in the first period. 14 to 6 in score. As Colbert tries to fight to keep it in, he will as Gabe gets a hand on the puck. Oh, and Terrence Pirabot, a great job of sticking with it, but he can't quite find it. As now a Bearcat takes out one of his own men as the Cougars dump the puck. They're going to get a line change in. Now a centering pass. Somebody got to step up there and get it. Almost there was Sperry, but it's going to find the stick of Bryce Simon. Simon, centering pass shot. They had a save made off of a shot by Hinson. It is a Chinese fire drill inside the Bearcat D zone right now. Luckily, we, uh, Young was there with the glove save to bail him out. Cougars are running rampant, just, just sending pucks toward the net and, uh, and cycling, just really having their way in the McKendry zone. Um, not a not a look that uh, Coach Dylan Muth wants to wants to see within that, within that uh, time frame. See if the Cougars keep that pressure going. Face off one by the Bearcats as they're going to try and break the puck out of their zone. And they'll do just that into the neutral zone. Going the other way now is Grasso. Grasso loses control of it off of an errant pass. It's going to be picked up by Henson over along the near corner. A little scrum going on there as they fight for it. It'll be played forward by Tony Grasso now over behind the net and deflected back the other way along the near board. Steps up, Davis with a shot, lazy shot, cover. Oh, save made by Curry. He wanted to cover it. He couldn't, but the Cougars get it the other way. Always dangerous when you want to cover it and you don't because it leaves you out of position with the puck rolling loose just out of your grasp. Yeah, that's a communication. You see the goalie trying to come down on it, and when you do that, you're going to put yourself out of position because you're trying to get where the puck is sitting. Uh, if the defenseman touches it and then gets it away from you, the the – the opposing team has an empty net to shoot at. So communication's got to pick up there by either between the goalie or the D or, or one of the two. Somebody's got to talk. Is Kate Hinson dumps the puck all the way down the ice, hands up for icing, 327 to go in the first period. It's good to see Cole Ebersall return to the lineup. He uh, he was a scratch last night. I believe he was still dealing with a, a little bit of a, a boo-boo or maybe he wasn't feeling well. I didn't get the official word yesterday, but he was. I saw him uh, – among the uh, walking wounded last night. I'll go uh, see if I can get uh, the official injury report in between from uh, team trainer Reese Ramirez. As the Cougars dump into the offensive zone, centering pass is going to be covered up now as the puck will roll lazily up along the far boards. Grabbed by McKendry, they're going to try and break it out. But a Cougar will complicate matters now along the near boards. Puck rolls on its end now in the neutral zones. Dumped over the other way, whistled dead for icing. You see a lot of awkward plays around the Cougar zone. Though. Not a lot of – they had, they had their one uh, – McKendry had their one segment of pressure, but you've seen uh, a defensive miscue that, that rolled over a stick and went right to a McKendry player. You see a, a defenseman and a goalie miscommunicate right there that set up McKendry for their chances, and that's going to be the way they're going to they're gonna have to manufacture some goals here. Cougars win the faceoff, and they're going to play it up into the neutral zone. That'll be grabbed by Erstemeyer, who will dump it right back in. Going and chasing after it now is Philly Kolobert. Kolobert now plays it over to Christian Perry. Perry gets it poked away from him. Puck will roll into the defensive zone for the Cougars. Cougars now look, looking to just put one on the board with two and a half minutes to go as time is ticking down in the first period. You know, the scoreboard reads a lot more even than I feel like the shots on goal do. Uh, the Cougars have had some high-quality chances as they play it in the neutral zone. But uh, the Kendry has had some decent possession to start the game, but you don't see that right now. No, yeah, time of possession, if you had to uh, give it a number, I'd say it would be about 70% SIU and uh, 30 for McKendry. Um, and it's dwindling. Christian Perry not helping those numbers for McKendry. He's stick handling in a phone booth now. He steps up. Oh, tries a little drag move there, but just can't find it. Oh. Considering pass, no chance there. As McKendry sticks, get in the way of a Cole Ebersolt shot as Wolf now dumps it into the offensive zone. Oh. 
Blue foot on there. Loose puck in the slot area. It's rolling around. It's going to get taken and dumped out of play. Oh, that was well out of play by the Cougars. The World Series going on. He's looking to put it in the big Mac land right there. That wasn't close to the glass. This is the NHL. That's a two-minute penalty, but here it's just a whistle. I was going to say, that uh, that that would have taken a fan's head off in the old Scott Trade Center. Oh, yeah. Or the Enterprise Center, excuse me. The way everyone's on their phones, yeah, that's a concussion for sure. Yeah. That's why if you sit close at sports games, I mean, don't look at your phone if there's not a netting. Be, be smart about it, people. That's Christian Perry steps across the blue line. He's got a man to beat. Shot wide. The Tucker's right there. Tries to tap it in. But if the Kendry Bearcat will get in the way. Now going the other way. It's going to fight Eversol. Eversol with a backhanded pass towards Wagner. Wagner plays it. And it's going to get tapped away by the Bearcats. The Bearcats try and poke it in. That's Gay. Gay in the Steps up, no offsides call, but despite the insistence for it, is the Cougars now break it out into the neutral zone. Here we go across the red line, across the blue line. Terrence Purebot tries to put on a move there, can't quite do it as he'll pick it, get it up to Rowe. Rowe with a shot from the point, save made. Oh, and a little pushing from Gay there. Way to counterattack there by the Cougars as uh, we had a little end to end action right there. Uh, it looks like the Cougars' fourth line, and they've they've been productive like you, you don't see a whole lot of minuses coming out of this line which is, is as a coach that's what you want to see you can put these guys out there it's not a liability they can not only give your top three lines a blow but they're going to produce something themselves so good on them drew paris was a force last night he was uh, he was all over the ice he had the puck multiple times and he was noticeable out there so uh yeah, the puck will lazily roll over to the goalie nason young who will cover it up that puck rolled from behind the net and it wasn't really it didn't really have any force on it either yeah. Looks like a spare tire just falling off of a semi going right to the goaltender right there that's a nice analogy is uh, face off will be won by wolfgang davis move now dispossessed by the cougars that's by pullabert and now it's going to be dealt over to henson henson can't get it before a stick finds it and now the cougars will break it into the neutral zone Cougars now one last push with 10 to go here. Dumped along the far boards. Davis, pressure put on 5-4, and I think this scrum is going to end the first period. Your score, 0-0, zero to 19-8. Zero, to eight. Shots on goal in favor of the Cougars. They'll certainly try to ride that increase in chances into the second period. That'll be right here with SIUE Cougar Hockey.
And we're back here for second period action. 19 to eight, the shots on goal in favor of the Cougars, but the scoreboard doesn't favor anybody. Zero to zero here as we move forward in game two of this tilt. This weekend series between the McKendree Bearcats and the SIUE Cougars. Those of you just joining us, if you don't know, these two teams do not like each other as Christian Perry steps across into the neutral zone. Two men on him immediately. They're going to break it up and play it into the near. It looked like he was in between whether to take it himself, split the D, or try and get it over to his uh, his wingmate there at a potential two. Oh, the whistles. They found their whistles. We're going to have penalties now. We're, we're having penalties? Hold on. I got to. You got to write stuff. I gotta figure out where my where my sheets are. Yeah, that'll be two minutes for slashing on number twenty Blake Pacmasian. Staying out of the box is going to be, like you said, paramount to a, a road to success for the Cougars, and uh, we'll see if they can kill this one off here. Second period, the long change is not going to favor them. That being said, they scored their shorthanded Kane scored his shorthanded goal in the second period. Of yesterday's game, they actually did a good job of killing off the power plays, with the exception of their uh, their late power play goal. So we'll see what happens here. Big chance there for the Bearcats. Meanwhile, it's going to be poked away and fired the length of the ice. As now pressure is going to be put on by Trevor Daly. He loses control. The puck finds a man. Shot. He had a save made by the goalie Mason Young. There you see the importance of just stopping the puck behind the net. You don't really have to do a whole lot with it. Just stop it for your D. Right there, Young went behind the net. Couldn't quite stop the puck. Either had a little mis miscommunication with his defense. The Cougars end up with a scoring chance right there. Best to do that ever. Best puck playing goalie of all time, Marty Berger. St. Louis Blues legend, you know. Yeah. <laughs> the puck is fired over to Mason Young. It is going to be played... Now the Bearcats will try and break it out. His jersey's going next to Gretzky's up there. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You know, I have one of those old rejected third jerseys with, like, all the horns on it. Yeah. And I really want to put a Gretzky on it. Just because, like, a, a, an ugly jersey for a fake blue, really, you know? <laughs> Just throw it all together in one sweater. That's what you want. Scrum now in the neutral zone. Back in, you pass it, and they'll break it in. McKendry hasn't gotten much going in the first minute and 10 seconds of this power play. Searing pass shot wide, and Dipsky wishes he had that one back. Puck now rolls over into the near quarter. It's going to be played up. Estermeyer can't keep it in, and the puck will roll all the way down. The only thing worse than that jersey with Gretzky on it was the coach's suit from last week from Bradley. That thing was hideous. Oh, man. You, you, there's a fine line between the hideous and like so bad it's art, and I think he straddled that line quite well. Yeah, he's barely on sides there, straddling the blue line. Is yes, SIUE rubs a man off, and they're going to dump it back into the neutral zone all the way down the length of the ice. This is a textbook, just a brilliant penalty kill for the Cougars here. I mean, I, Casey, you know, you coach. Can, can you write it up any simpler than this? It's really what you want. I mean, you got they have no pressure in the zone. I don't think they really had – they had one attempted shot on net. As the Cougars break up another one right there, Bearcats course to retreat over to the far board. Sidney pass. Nope. Right in a row. Takes the puck into the neutral zone. Textbook is pure about now. Steps across the blue line. Shot. Finds a skate. That's really a poor choice of shot selection there. Had a man right in front of him. As the puck will be fought over and along the near boards. Anytime you can outshoot the other team on their power play, I think you're going to get a, a round of applause from your coaching staff. There's a shot from Braden Rowe. Good chance. Puck still loose in front of the net. As the Bearcats walk away with it, they're going to dump it down the length of the ice. Hands up for icing. Whistles out for icing. And there it is. 21 to 8 shots on goal in favor of the Cougars. This is this is the point in the game I think we're going to see a little offense. With this uh, long change in the way the Cougars have handled McKendry in their own zone, I think this is just going to favor them. We're going to see a lot of... I would think see a lot of icings, and with that, you're not going to see a lot of line changes out of McKendry, and a tired bunch out of there is going to result in a cooler goal. So let's see if that happens, or if I'm just really just blowing smoke. We'll see. I, my money is on blowing smoke usually, but I think you're right here. SIUE wins the faceoff, tries a centering pass. Oh, man, that was almost a wraparound attempt, centering pass, something. Either way, it was blocked over into the far corner. Don't quite tell what the intention on that was, but the shot from the far point is going to be go off. Young's looking for it; he can't find it, but it went way up outside the uh, outside the 
Brink. The chance by Sperry there was the, the NHL 93 for Super Nintendo option. You can either get the goalie caught on the post and just wrap it in, no problem, or just dish it off to the other guy and just slam it home. I was more of a, an NHL 04 kind of kid. Oh, that's right. You weren't born until... 95. There you go. <laughs> You missed the golden era of, era of video games. 94, they introduced the one-timer. Oh, don't don't mistake. I've played 94. There's a shot now. Loose puck laid on it by Young. It's still loose. No whistle. And that puck will get broken out by the Bearcats. Oh, man. A brilliant chance there. Bearcats going the other way. Center cast shot. Same name by Curry. No whistle still. There's people all over. And now there's pushing and shoving. They're going to break it up here. Both teams think better than take any post-whistle penalties here with such a tight game. Yeah, they look like an elephant car wash in the crease right there. Just a mass humanity right there in front of Curry. He, was, he did well to keep the puck out for the amount of time that he did because there was six to seven bodies right there and, and to keep it out. And then as he got pushed into the net, the ref's like, yeah, this isn't going to happen. Uh, Faceoff's coming outside. No goal. Anyway, don't don't mistake me. I've played my fair share of 94. I think I think <laughs> NHL 94 is maybe the best sports game of all time. Yeah. But uh yeah, I grew up. I grew up on the Jimmy Eat World era of NHL soundtracks. Big Hendry wins the faceoff. They're gonna play it up now. Hinson steps up on the point shot. Oh, it's gonna go off of a skate now, rolling into the near zone. Shot wide again by Hinson off of the blue line. Net goes off. Place your bets. Is that an intentional net or unintentional uh, net? I think it's an unintentional net. I don't think it was intentional either. No. And it's coming outside, so it's got to be on SIU, unfortunately. We gotta, we gotta invest. We gotta talk, sweet talk Larry into some uh, some better anchor pegs for these nets. They come off way too easy, and I took full advantage of that in my day. But uh, <laughs> now was not the time. Face off one by McKendry. McKendry placed it over across the blue line, broken up there by SIUE, and they'll dump it. Erstemeyer, and it'll be intercepted. No going the other way. Is Perry across the blue lines? Look, shoots off of a stick and out of play. Looks like they switched up that first line a little bit. They got Tucker, uh, Tucker Tech, and Perry on that line. I think they swapped to Marshall and Tucker there. I don't know if that's a second period adjustment. Maybe get some more time in the ozone. Maybe. I mean, it, the one thing it is is it's keeping McKendry on their feet. You know. You try and match your first line to first line, et cetera. You get the line, you get the lineup matches you want. As now SIUE was the face off, they're gonna kick the puck up into the near zone, into the near point. And it's gonna be fired back down. You, know, you, you finally get adjusted to the matchups you want, and now going the other way. Hold on there. That's fucking Davis shot. Save made by Curry. And the puck will bounce around and SIUE will break it down. They'll pass it down the length of the ice. Hands up. And that'll be called for icing. Good save there by Curry. Unfortunately, couldn't catch it, but uh, that, that shot was labeled for the top corner. It's a good shot by Northrop there. Uh, that's one of their better chances of this game, uh, one of 10 that they've had so far. I, th I think one of the side effects of changing the lineups this much is you're, you're forcing McKendry to make an adjustment. McKendry, you find the lineup, you know, matchups you want, but then all of a sudden that lineup, you know, you're putting your third out against their first, but their first is now, you know, a different guy on the wing or two different guys. It's now going the other way, two on one. Looks, Christian Perry, to Tucker, shot. Oh, my, what a save by Mason Young. Got that with a paddle of the stick coming across right to left. Great save by Young. Game recognized. Game now. Shot from Perry goes wide. Is he? Puck will roll along the far board. Oh, that was a beautiful chance and an even more beautiful save. I would have risen to my feet, but I think I would have knocked the entire setup we have here over. But that's a heck of a save by it, Young. It, it doesn't matter whose team we're you know, broadcasting for. That was brilliant. Now, chance by Tucker. Sittering. Oh, my goodness. Young was out of position, but nobody was there to clap it home. And now the Cougars find this puck in the slot. Shot. Save made by Young, and he's going to poke it away. Now the Bearcats dump it up into the neutral zone. Possible one-on-one -on -one chant going the other way. And that's Nelson. Nelson, there were four Cougars around and now, and the Cougars have dumped the puck. All the way down the length of the ice will be played by Young. It's the kind of save that if you can, especially when you're getting heavily outplayed, you make that kind of save, your team comes down and scores. It's usually what happens in uh, in games like this where you're getting you're getting severe, like McHenry is getting severely outplayed right now. Shots, it's Cougar, 27 to 10. Young's going to see a, a heavy load tonight. You know, we've seen a couple chances, maybe not as good as that, but we've seen a couple great chances for the Cougars. We haven't seen that kind of quality of chance for the Bearcats so, yet no. so far. So it'll be interesting to see as it develops if the Bearcats can uh, 
you know, work their way into some more possession and some better chances. It's going to be one of those things where they're going to need to bounce and uh, come down the other way or a blown tire by a Cougar D. Simon finds a man centering on Sperry. Sperry can't corral the puck, so now he's going to try and ping it up against the post. It'll be poked away now, going around the net. No, it'll be covered over by Mason Young. I tell you what, no matter who, you know, what team we get paid to broadcast here, uh, you, you applaud good hockey when you see it, and that was brilliant. Brilliant play there by Mason Young. What else can you say? That's a hell of a save. I mean, that's it, the game zero zero because of that save. Like that's it is what it is. You, you, there's no, there's no bias to be made. That's a beautiful thing about hockey and goaltending. That's almost goaltending is almost a different sport. And for a guy to, to make a save something like that when he's really down and out, ended up being a two on almost a two on zero oh, guy on the back post. The guy's he's got Young dead to rights to make a save like that. It's it's just uh, something you have to appreciate regardless of who you're going for. Yes, IUE up across the blue line into the neutral zone. That's Sperry. Sperry looking for a man, and Simon can't find a man. And now diving across the ice is their lead. He can't find it. It's dumped in for the Bearcats. That'll go off of Curry. Technically counts for a shot on goal. I don't think that was actually intended to, you know, create anything other than maybe a rebound opportunity. It's now Braden Rose smacks the puck down to the center ice. Scrum now with the puck. Centering pass. Oh, no. There's a shot on goal that hit the side of the net. As now the Cougars break it into the neutral zone. Puck will roll into the offensive zone. And McKendry will play it up along the near boards. Oh, huh? hands up for a tripping call there on Braden Rose. That pass was going to Dalton Wolf, but got a stick right in the skates. And down he goes. Two minutes of penalty kill coming for the Cougars. The shorter of the two Wolves that are out there. Uh, looks like the other one is uh, is going to be on for the power play. Yeah, and going just going back to the goaltender, and it's it's one of those things where he's either going to have a game a night and the entire night like this, and it, even after that chance, Tucker had a, a shot at an empty net, did nothing happen, and it's one of those things where everything's kind of going right, goaltender's living right, and your team he's going to give your team a chance. Or a Cougar's going to pop one in, and then the floodgates are going to open, and one's going to come to two. Two's going to end up being four, it's and a, it just escalates quickly. It's a feast or famine kind of night for a goaltender, and you could just feel that. Yep. There's a lot of trouble going on along the uh, the Cougar's penalty box. It's so hard to get in. We, we've re we're recording that to make a small promo of it, so keep your eyes peeled to the uh, Twitter and the Facebook coming up soon here as the Bearcats – Play the puck over to the far point. Now shot. It's going to be loo oh, loose. Shot. Save made by Curry. There's a puck rolls over along the far boards. Cougars going to catch a little break here as uh, McKendry Ford breaks the stick. Colbert now plays it forward to Perry. Perry tries to drop the tack, but it was just too close to effectively Taylor make that pass. Bearcats across the neutral zone. Poked away by Kane Henson. Great defensive play there, but now he's behind the plate. Erstemeyer shot, saving, no, it's going to roll loose, and it almost rolled into the net there. Almost just barely caught enough of it through the six hole of Curry, and that just rolled right out. They got a little bit of it. That's the big, that's the Ed Belfour jersey that you want right there. The baggy jersey slows it down, and it rolls out to the side. Is the puck is now played over to Scrum. Scrum plays it up along the near boards. That's going to be grabbed, though, by Drew Parrish. Parrish across the blue line. Stick handling move it will successfully waste some time as that chance fizzles with 40 seconds left to go in the power play. Across the blue line. Looking up, that's Bielicki. Bielicki finds by Adina. Adina over to Gay along the near point. Gay steps down to the near corner. Turns it up and around. Tries a centering pass. Oh, finds by Great Adina. save by Curry. Oh, great tap there. Good save by Curry. And the puck will roll over to the far corner. The advantage of the RVH is a play just like that, and he does it very well and makes a great block of save there. Now the puck will get played up along the far boards. McKendry with eight seconds left on the power play. to do a scrum just trying to make something happen. That'll get pinned up against the wall by Drew LaRose, who knows exactly that this is going to go back to even strength. It's going to be lazily pushed up against Curry. Ooh, a little pushing and shoving going on there. Each two teams, you can see the tempers starting from last night. Yep, that's a uh, going back to that save by Curry. That's just that's a technical save. He didn't even he he knew that the player was going that was behind the net. I believe that was Gay behind the net. He had a guy on the back door, but just in the way that he plays that position in the RVH, he stays down in his butterfly and is moving side to side, post going post to post. 
just in his technique, he's able to make that save, and that's that's a great one to keep the, the game scoreless right now. And the uh, Bearcats will win the faceoff. They'll play it over along the near boards. This is going to be a fight along the near boards, as always, in the McKendry defensive zone. They'll get taken away there by number 15. That's Caden Brilliant. Really finds a man over to Gatorman, but a stick this kind of high, the surge of offensive chances going on here in the middle of the second period. SIUE intercepts it going the other way. That's Tacmation, and he'll get it hooked away. <coughs> now going the other way is Brilly. Brilly across. Brian Skulvoko, but we'll just have to. Huge hit there. Kane hits his stick, goes flying. Is the puck will roll and they'll get covered up by Nosser right around his own post. And Curry does well there to, to cover that up, especially in the second period. You want to get as many cover ups as you can to, to, to get your line change, leaving the puck. And it's an odd, it's an odd play with a, a puck going off to the net. You don't really know, it kind of curves into the post. You don't really know where that puck's going to bounce. So get, getting the covers, uh, good play there. Deflected off of Curry off the face off, and now the puck will roll over. To the Erstemeyer, who will shoot it over for the point. Shot well wide. Curry doesn't even have to move for it. It is Cole Eversold is getting pressure put on him in the, or he's rather putting pressure on a man in the far quarter. So, Eversold last night missed, uh, it was a coach's to scratch, but it was spurred by uh, the hit from last week. Lower body injury. Yes. Nothing specific, but uh, he's feeling better now, so he's back in. 8.33 to go in the second period. Oh. oh. Stick, bud. Bad play there by Chris Wagner. He tried to field it with his skate, not his stick. And a puck will roll into the neutral zone. Now going the other way is Ebersalt. Can't quite catch up with it. And the Bearcats will find a man in scrum. Scrum with a backhanded hand to Dibsky. Gitsky dumps it in. It's eight minutes to go in the second period. That'll be fielded by Wagner. Wagner will play over to Zerlini, but not before Wolf gets there to keep it in. Over to Scrum. Now back to Wolf. Scrum now is shot from a four angle and a save made by Curry. Kendry picking it up a little bit here in a second. Yeah, absolutely. Scrum with a shot off of a stick is going to roll into the near corner, and now pressure put on to the Cougars. Since that uh, majestic save by the McKendry goaltender, it's been uh, McKendry's had the better of the pressure here. Well, we said that would happen too. I mean, you make a save like that, people are going to get fired up, re regardless of you know how actually physically tired they are. Yeah, you got to you look at the, the the scoreboard right now and the shot differential, and you're like, we we have no business being in it. Our goalie is keeping us in it, and it gets your bench fired up. Oh, a big hit there, and a man's down. Oh, this is not good. He's uh, face down. Pushing and shoving going on there between Noah Scrum and Austin Zerlini, who hit the man. Who is that down? Let's just take a look here and see. Trainers coming out. It's a heavy hit. He looked to get him maybe from behind, maybe from the, the side. The, the end result was not good. Yeah, it was not not a good hit. I, there wasn't a, too many steps of charge up there. It was just a hit along the boards. But either way... Austin Zerlini is going to be serving quite a few minutes here, no doubt about it. All right, I think I think we can say that that is number 10, Tyler Erstemeyer. And Erstemeyer is a pretty solid player. He had at, Last year, their D1 team was their D2 team. Their D2, this current team was their D3 team. Erstemeyer spent time with that top team, and he's he's a he's a good player for the, for a, a noticeable player from McKendry, so hopefully he's okay. You, you'd never... You never want to see something like this, and especially now as it's he'll slowly get up to, to sitting on the ice here. You know, you, you want to see hard play, and, and you love to hate the, the rivals, but uh, you know these are these are kids; they got their whole future ahead of them. You don't want to see this kind of thing happen ever. Yeah. At the end of the day, you don't want to see any uh, any other stuff kind of come out of it. So hopefully, he's all right. Maybe take a little break, but uh, can re-enter the game here on the back half of the power play. He's back on his feet now. We'll keep an eye out for Erstemeyer to see what the procedure will be if he's gonna, just going to go straight back to the locker room, which would be my guess. But he's skating under his own power back to the bench.
Uh, looks like it's going to be a two-minute, potentially a boarding hit. I think Cougar's going to get away with one here. Maybe the ref believes that he turned it into that hit. Uh, penalty nonetheless, but uh, the severity ended, ends up being decided by the refs, and Dylan is not happy. No. So Dylan Muth, the McKendry co the McKendry coach, certainly not happy about what appears to be right now just a standard two and a boarding call. And you know, I don't think I blame him. Oh, yeah, you, you see your player go down, and potentially one of your better players go down, and you want to make sure you get the maximum amount out of that uh, that injury, the play that created this injury here. Yeah. And the ref is adamant that uh, it's not a five. But I, so, from up here, it looked pre it looked pretty bad. I think Zerli I think Zerlini gets out with uh, comes out ahead here. Yeah, there's some booze coming for the McKendry side. So Erstemeyer is on the bench. His heads, his helmet's off. Trainer right behind him. I, I would think that uh, there might be might have rattled his cage, so to speak. There. Um, if I'm the backup goalie, I'm standing right in front of him. Yeah. Yeah. SIU wins the faceoff. They'll kick the puck all the way down. That'll be fielded to Trevor Wolf. Dumped in by the Bearcats with a minute and a half. Kane Hinson now grabs the puck along the boards. It'll go up the lake to the ice. and It'll be played once again by Noah Strum. Or excuse me, no, that's, on, that's uh, Trevor Wolf. My bad. Trevor Wolf now with the puck in the defensive zone. Three men break it out into the neutral zone. That's Dembski. Dembski can't quite corral it. He'll go chasing after the puck in the near corner. Pressure put on there by the Cougars. It'll be grabbed and played up the near boards. Over to Wood. Over to Scrum. Scrum with the shot. Save made by Noss or by Curry. I've done that twice tonight now. <laughs> it happens. You know, you get used to saying save made by Nosser, and then Curry comes in. I think I think part of it too is uh, I've missed the last couple of Friday games, and uh, usually Nasser's the one playing on the Saturday. That's true. Yeah, they kind of flipped it a little bit and uh, changed up the routine. So far, it's looked to help. Nasser had a hell of a game last night, and uh, Curry's doing the same right now. Yeah, I mean, there's uh, no complaints about the goalie play this weekend from the Cougars uh, with six minutes left in the second. Face off one by Sperry. Sperry's dumped the link down the ice. I will say that it looks like Erstemeyer has his helmet back on. On the bench. We'll see if that's just for safety or if he's going to re-enter the game here. Bielicki offside. Enters the zone, possibly offside, but it's not going to be called as such as the puck will be grabbed. That's by Nick Gay. Gay now. Puck up along the near boards. Fired. Shot wide. They grabbed and took forward by Trevor Daly. Especially the, the way McKendry got their power play. You see a lot of times if you see an injured player in a team results in a, in a power play after that, they try and try and get one for him. Uh, right now they haven't really had the kind of chances that would that you'll see that. A lot of sharp angle shots and perimeter play. Brilliant reverse check there by Nick Gay. As time runs out on the penalty, he his best shot. Oh! Great save. How did he save that? Got Five his right paw. To go. Oh, my goodness. How did Curry get a pat on that? Is now the Cougars are going into the neutral zone. Sperry up across the blue line. And he's going to dump it in with under five minutes to go with the second period. Tucker Miss Perry streaking right there. Could have, that could have been the uh, the answer to the, the Curry looks, save. Looks to be a hand up. Another penalty coming up to, uh, for the Cougars. Bad pass. That'll be touched by Chris Wagner. And the Cougars go right back on the penalty kill. What did we talk about before the game? Staying disciplined. Not letting the Cougars or not letting uh, McKendry back in the game or in the game at all. Right now, they've had, I want to say, the majority of the power uh, chances on the power play three to one, two to one. Uh, that would be four to zero. Four zero. Stand corrected. Yeah. It, well, you'd say three to one. That's not a great ratio. Four no. zero. Four zero is worse. It is not good. So that's uh, potentially eight minutes of power play time in the second period where the Cougars could take advantage of the long change and. Eight minutes very well could have been eleven minutes if that if that boarding hit is called the way I think we saw it. Very true. Uh, is the Bearcats with the face off? They're going to dump it over into the offensive zone. Hits it, puts pressure on. A minute forty three left to go in the PK for the Cougars. Erstemeyer is back out there. He's going to dish it over to the far board. Shot saved made by Curry. So Erstemeyer back out on the ice. 
good to see that he's uh, he's out there. Um, I was I was worried, you know, we might have been in concussion territory the way he was on the he's on down the for a ice, while. but uh, it, you know, if the team trainer says he's good to go, he's good to go. Yeah, you don't need any other answers. She's it's ultimately on her. No pressure. It's just the guy's help. Yeah. But uh, they do take that very seriously up into the neutral zone. It's Christian Perry. Good move put on there. Oh, he finds a man and Lucas Tucker shot wide. Ho, ho, ho. Mason Young might have been beat there on the blocker's side, which uh, is his left side. We mentioned that earlier. A little odd there. Swanky, wonky net miners. They have another wrong-sided uh, attendee in Andrew Best on the D1 team. So they have three guys that catch with the right hand. It's really an uh, anomaly in, in hockey to have that many silly siders on the same organization. I wonder if that's intentional or if that's just how it works out. Maybe that's how they grow them in Canada and uh, one in, in Edwardsville. I don't know. Who knows? Kid last night is from some weird city in Ontario, So uh, and Best is also a Canadian, so I don't know. They, they do grow them on there in Canada. They grow to be hockey players. From day one, as Kane Henson now grabs the puck along the near board, he's going to dump it back in. 36 seconds left to go on the penalty kill as Nick Gay will field the puck over in the far corner. A lot of the berths up there are extra painful because the kids come out with skates. <laughs> uh, I don't know why that hit me like it did, but... <laughs> Yeah, they they actually they don't actually have skates. They're uh, they just kind of grow blades out of mm. the bottom of their foot, out of the bottom of their feet. Pretty much Wolverine. Yeah, all of them. Well, you know, Wolverine was Canadian. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Face off, wanted a shot wide by Drew Paris. Going to be fielded by the Bearcats. Bearcats into the neutral zone, going the other way. They had a centering pass. will get a stick to it. It'll be broken up before Bielicki can take a shot from a center location. Going the other way now, it's here's Purebot. Purebot now, a little stick handling move shot. Couldn't elevate the puck, but still forced Young to make the save as the puck goes up the near boards now. That's Bielicki. Bielicki skates around a couple of Cougars now. A shot. Nasser makes the save, closes off that quarter. Yeah, the puck will roll now along the far boards. Played up and down the far boards, and it'll be dumped back in by the Bearcats. Bearcats get a full line change done here. He is going the other way is Lucas Tucker. No, excuse me, that's not Lucas Tucker. That's Nick. Paris. That's Drew Paris. I saw the three, you know. You think you know who's on the ice? The lineup changes say no. Yep. Now the Cougars will dump it over into the offensive zone. Hands up, waves off for icing. He going the other way now. That's Brilly. Brilly with a good stick on the move there. He's going to take the puck around the goal. Curry. Curry with the one shot. Curry can't stop the rebound. It's 1 0 and the Bearcats take the lead. It opened up scoring with a minute and 40 to go in the second period. That was a great first save by Curry, but uh, the, the defending forward right there didn't pick his man up and gave. Uh, who was that? Brilly, you said? I, I believe it was Brilly. We're going to call it Brilly until I can go get proven wrong by the scorekeepers but uh yeah, it gave the goal scorer he had a ton of time to do something with the uh, that second shot he was able to go from his forehand to his backhand and flip it over and i think curry got a piece of it but cougars got to respond they're not going to win with no goal scored yeah no you still have the same objective which is get a goal on the board big hit behind the net there it's going down with Col colbert bill colbert Grabs the puck behind the net now, and he's going to dump it up into the neutral zone. That's going to find a man. Here we go. Going the other way. Two on one. Centering pass. Oh, just can't quite find the stick of Chris Wagner. Right now, you've got inspired play out of McKendry with after that last hit. And that really, after the young save, it's been all. It's been, not all McKendry, but it's it's tilted to that direction. Bearcats now take it across the blue line. This has been an all-out war for the first 40 minutes of the game. And it will absolutely be for the last 20. Loose puck now. Centering pass shot. Oh, it's a backhanded save by Nosser. And now a second one from a shot from a really sharp angle. Alec Marshall tries to clear the puck. Erstemeyer says no. He's going to fire it right back down. Puck rolls along the near board. It's going to try and be broken out. 30 seconds to go left in the second period. It's up for offsides, and the Cougars will try one last push 
to tie the game before Big the end of the second. Pass here. Big old stretch pass. That's going to find Christian Perry. Stick handling shot off of a stick and out of play. 17.7 .7 left to go. Right now, it's been a, a goaltending battle. Curry's made some great saves. Young made that, uh, we talked about it ad nauseum, that uh, that miraculous save with his, uh, his stick, the paddle of his stick. Save of the year candidate. Yeah. Cougars going to have to respond here either later in the third. Face off one by the Cougars. No, it's lost control. Up going the other way. It's no scrum. It's a two on one. He finds a man. Oh, he just kicked. Quite located. Good job there by Kyle Kohlerberg to Aiden breaking up the pass. Going the other way. Here we go. Christian Perry. Fake shot. Now another shot. We'll call it a fake shot. He might have just whipped on it in the second period. Score one to nothing in favor of the McKendry Bearcats. We'll be back shortly for the conclusion of this game through the first 40 minutes it's been a war and it'll be an all-out war in the third period for sure you're listening to siue cougar hockey
And we are back. This third period. So I said the first couple periods were like war. Uh, this one might be a World War Three. Some wild stuff happened in this period. And honestly, the hockey fan in me uh, is just excited to see what's going to develop here. Yeah, you see, a, you see a team that's that's been out the other team the entire game, with the exception of eight minutes that they've had to sit on the on the kill. And now they're down one nothing. They're going to come out with, uh, with a little bit of everything here. Another hand pass. That stock is just going up. Oh man! Thankfully, I invested in hand pass. Unfortunately, I tried to. Uh, I, I tried to. Uh, Sold too early. Well, you know, I, I counter invested in goalie interference, and I just I'm taking a loss on it. Yeah, I I I've got a portfolio that's heavy in nets coming off, so I get I'm I'm doing pretty well. That's not bad. <laughs> yeah, face off goes to the Cougars' defensive no zone. Coley plays it over to the near corner. I'll tell you what I should have done was in invested in boarding. We've seen two of those calls so far today. But you don't usually see those in a game. It's Kate Henson knocks a man off the puck. Now Cougars with a chance. Centering pass, no. to go off of a skate or a leg to fly over to the far boards into the neutral zone. Go the Bearcats. You'll get a better view of it on the stream, but did you see the way that the guy flew off the body of Kane Henson? Yes. That was, that was incredible. That was ragdoll physics. Uh... It was an explosion of, of, of humanity, and Kane uh, won that one. It reminded me of, uh, I think it was 15 or 16, the NHL series updated their gra updated their physics engine, and, like, you just have guys flying. Yeah. Oh, going the other way. Offsides. You hit somebody right, they just fly 100 feet in the air, and, like, they don't come down for 10 seconds. Like yes. That, that's the kind of hit that just happened. Hey, and you know what? It was clean. Everybody's not injured and we want to see more of that please yep. stay out of the box fellas everybody stay out of the box this game does not need any more any dramas any suspension any drama any suspensions we don't need anything like that there's the cougars taking it to the offices so i'm trying to fight a man and paris just can't be there and now he's gonna hit it, a loose knuckle puck that was rolling around at the top of the circle little coley at the point dumps it back in Back now to the point. Oh, it's going to be whiffed on. That's not great there from Drew LaRose. And now centering pass there. Terrence Fairbot. Oh, he had a chance, but he couldn't do anything with it. So in goes Wolf. That's Dalton Wolf. Who's control of the puck? Oh, my goodness. Nita steps up, shoots wide. Oh, and another shot is going to be deflected by Curry. That's the kind of play there we, that we alluded to in the first period. A lot of, a lot of little breaks. Two, two players run into each other. It creates a chance for McKendry. Up across is Nelson into the offensive zone. Pressure put on by Ebersolt. It ever oh, a man blows a tire. Two on one. Going the other way. Whoa. Hands up. For a penalty. I will be honest, uh, I'm not going to make a statement on the rest, but uh, I did not expect that to be a penalty call. I'm going to go ahead and say brutal. I'm going to self-censor a little bit. Yeah. That's, that's five uh, five zip now for McKendry in the, uh, in the special teams. It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. We gotta kill off another one here, though. Gotta kill off another one here. As Alec Marshall goes to the box, off the faceoff shot, save made by Curry. A little push and shoving. Oh man, his helmet comes off. Don't see that every day. That's why you buckle it up. I say that helmet does not come off if you uh, if you buckle that properly. For as as all of a sudden on top of the penalties as the refs are right now, I'm surprised they didn't. Uh, go through a ten point uh, helmet check. On yeah, that guy. yeah. I, isn't it is it is a penalty if it's uh, not properly strapped, correct? Yeah. If you don't have if you don't have the proper ear protection, you can't play until you do. <laughs> it's funny. You see, you see players that come from junior hockey and they play here, and that's like not a that's not a thing. That's not a rule. You don't have to have. Oh, uh, we're into the neutral zone. Hold on here, because there's a two on one. Look, shot. Oh, and it's off a man skate. There's a brilliant chance there for Bryce Simon. Goes to waste. 
As you're saying, though, it's not a rule in junior hockey that you have to have it all strapped down, correct? No. You know, it's yeah, it's not a rule. And if, if you're over a certain age, you can wear a visor. Then you go into college and you have to wear cages and you have to have the uh, the plastic earpiece. Kind of a, a step backwards, you'd think. You would think. Kidger hit the puck in the defensive zone. They're going to break it out of the offensive zone. Loses Blandina. It is the Cougars apply pressure now. Oh, Ken Henson. On the four check. Now it's a two on three. Go the other way. Here go the Bearcats. Bearcats looking up around the net. Sitting pass shot. Save made by Curry. And a save off the rebound. Another shot. Scores. The Bearcats make it two to nothing. That's another save by Curry on a guy on point blank chance. And two saves back to back. And a D can't clear the puck out. A little goal has got to have a little help there. And to have that guy all alone, although they are uh, five on four, that's where the uh, the kill is going to happen, right around the net, right around the house, as I like to call it. And no one was home to, to step up on that guy. And so the goal will be scored by Derek Northrop to make it two to nothing, McKendrick. Up across the blue line off of a Bearcat faceoff win. Centering pass. Oh, it'll be... Stop, stepped in front of there by Chris Wagner. Up to Davis in the blue line. Shot's going to hit. A skater two, and now the Cougars find their way up into the neutral zone. Poking loose puck into the offensive zone of the Bearcats. Centering pass, can't find a man. Now to the point. Shot's going to go well wide. It is going to be a grab there by Braden Rowe. It's how you be going the other way, Christian Perry. If there's a man that's going to make it, make something happen. It's going to, it's got to be the guy with 1.75 average points per game so far this season. Christian Perry has got to do something. You just have a feeling. It's got to be, right now. It's got to be, yeah. It's got to come from him. He's got to be inspired as well as the rest of the guys on that team. Uh, you can't, you don't want to lean on one player to have to do it all. And there's plenty of, there's plenty of talent on this team that that can make something happen. It just got to. Just got to do it. Yeah, there's been no shortage of chances from either side here tonight as Gay plays the puck. He, never mind, no. That's how he plays it to the neutral zone. Going up across the offensive zone. That's Bryce Simon. Simon tries a centering pass. Finds a man, but not a shot. There it is. Oh, and a loose puck. Oh, there's a loose puck opportunity in the slot area, and it got swatted away by the Bearcats. That's how he regains it in the neutral zone. Cougars need a call or a bounce. They get one of the two, and I think it's going to change the complexion of this game. And so here comes Christian Perry. A little move here. Hands up. Shot. Scores. It's two to one. Cougars. We have a game on our hands. That was impressive. And the Cougars will get a power play as they scored on a delayed call. How's that for a twofer? That's uh, you're not going to get a shortage of higher light reel plays out of number one six right there, and uh, that's going to just go on the list. I was, I was going to say, I that was a brilliant goal, and uh, that'll be put at about the five minute mark of the highlight reel. That's that's that was just the end of the year, yep. And that's one now, as a goalie, you've you've been outplayed, you're up to nothing at the time, two nothing, you give up a goal there. It's demoralizing. Now it's you're at a one goal lead, and Cougars finally have their first power play. Well, there's nothing. There's nothing Young could have done about that. That you know, sometimes you just look at the shooter and you're like, "Hey, I, you, you beat me." Tip, tip, tip your cap. cap. Yep. Yeah. yeah, that's exactly what you got to do right there. Yeah. It, I just I feel almost worse for the defenseman who's naked right now. So he just got undressed by Christian Perry. He does. He does tend to do that, doesn't he? Yeah. Puck now up across the blue line. Cougars in the offensive zone. They're on the power play. Shot by Perry. Saved made by Young, who has had a brilliant game, all things considered, this evening. Seen a lot of fire out of uh, 16. Hopefully the uh, the rest of the troops can can get that same, can sit next to them and get that same fire and, and uh, just start burying some pucks here. Well, I was talking to our camera guy here, Mulchie. Connor said, you know, hey, this is just good hockey all around and you can feel something coming here as Kane Henson at the point now centers it up to Rowe. Back to the far boards, now back to Rowe to Henson looking. 
And he's going to get dispossessed, too. The kids repair cats are on the way there. And he's somehow going to walk away with it. Oh, man, as he tries to center and oh, shot. Off the dome. And it's going to go off the off the old mask, off the cask there. It's going to get played now down to Rowe. Rowe, back to Hinson. Hinson and shot. Oh, and it it's is. a loose puck. Oh, it's going to roll in. I thought it was going to be whistled, but it got rolled, it rolled in. Two to two Cougars off of a power play. Oh, how quickly things can change. A call or a bounce, huh? 2-2. Two, two. Boys are coming back. A little resolve right here. A little resilience. That looks like it's going to be Eversault on the goal. His hip's fine. Uh, <laughs> Eversault on the goal. Oh, man. 2-2. Two two. And, and here's the kicker is... It's the same thread, right? Like you score and you get a power play, and you score on that power play. That's almost double dipping. Yep. Not only that, but now the Cougars, after not having scored a goal in their uh, prior 35 shots, they scored two of the last three. Yeah, that's called breaking it wide open as the puck will get ice as Braden Roach chases it down. One thing to notice about Young is that. He does not use his stick very well. To, to take, well, he made an incredible save with his stick, but on your uh, perimeter shots, a lot of them go off of his pads, which creates a lot of rebound chances for the Cougars. That last goal was a rebound chance for the Cougars. If they can just, if they don't have anything to throw something off of his gear, they might find an, an empty net or a guy out of position that just to just tip in or uh, slide over to a, a teammate. Breakout pass goes to Nelson. Can't find a man. Now, Casey, I kind of want to show you uh, old footage of me playing and just have you tear me apart, but I'm also afraid of what might happen. I'm not saying he's a terrible boy, but there's there's things in there. In oh, guys hold games. on, hold on here. Shot. Yeah! Score! Oh, boy, the Cougars make it 3-2. to two. Alec Marshall against a teammate, former teammate. That's a big goal by 63, that freshman. Put the team on his back, flying down the wing, and just picked the top corner of the glove hand of Young. The puck almost came back faster out of the net than it did off a stick. Almost four minutes ago, within the sec, uh, down to the second, almost four minutes ago, we were thinking, hey, maybe McKendry has just taken, you know, maybe not the nail in the coffin, but uh, the, lead, the, the commanding lead of this game. And oh, how quickly thinks the church change four minutes it takes for this game to get flipped up on side its head we're watching a special game of hockey here tonight between these two teams it's been a special kind of weekend and these are these are big points these are it's a conference game this is playoffs could potentially be on the line here there's a lot of good teams in the macha you need to get all the points you can it's still the puck will get fired oh white of curry then it'll get broken out it played for by craig four Now a bad pass to Davis. It's going to roll down the length of the ice. It's going to be played by Young. You know, I'm not saying that you said that <laughs> Young's trash. I'm just saying that Young's played a very admirable uh, game. He's, he's, been, game. he's been very solid, and I was trash is what I'm saying. Oh. So I'm almost fear that. <laughs> okay. I mean, there's things. I've seen a lot of goalies play, and you, you can pick up on little things that can help your team out in scoring goals. And but it's not a – it's one thing you'd like to have a goalie do is use it, direct pucks away from the net, and that helps himself out, helps his D out. If there's something that he doesn't do, that's just something you pick up on you let your forwards know about. Really now up along the near board. It's going to be rubbed off by the Cougars. That'll be grabbed by Lucas Tucker. Tucker plays it up to Perry. Perry across the red line, across the blue line. He's so dangerous. Oh, oh he fights move of a great block there by Tapmasian. Kid's got the puck on a string right now. He is a dangerous man. Perry plays it back to Tacmasia. Tacmasia tries to sitter it. Can't quite do it. And the puck will be fought for behind the net. Shot off of a couple of skates now as the puck rolls over along the far board. Strikes his face. Oh! Christian Perry almost has a highlight reel goal there. Diving while shooting, but it's going to find a couple of skates as the Puck rolls along the near boards of the McKendry offensive zone. Someone just got buried in the corner. And it wasn't a Cougar. Going the other way now. Here are the Cougars. It's I a one-on-two. Terrence Pirabot 
Well, you love to see that kind of stick handling from somebody so fresh to the team. Oh, it's a rolling puck. Shot. Scores. Terrence Kramer. Oh, and here's a little pushing and shoving going on afterwards. Did that go in? I thought that went in. We got no goal. I think uh, the McKendry Tendy got his got his left got his left leg on it. I don't know how there isn't a penalty on on Wolf. There there will be. I'm seeing one right now. Well, uh, the other one. Yeah. The, the, Actually, that's on Nathan Gaterman. The the smaller guy came in and he's a all of five foot, and that's it. <laughs> and he tried. He tried to hit one of our play, like he he left his feet pretty uh, substantially to make a hit and missed. I think that's why he didn't get a penalty because he missed the hit. <laughs> so Gatorman though is going to get two minutes. Hey, you know here's a fun fact: ten seventeen left to go in the third period. This is McKendry's first penalty. What's the second? They scored on the on the on the goal. Oh, they, you're goal. right. You're right. I have a, are one for one. I didn't write that one down. See, this is this this is where I have much to learn here. That's why I'm here. Yeah. Team teamwork makes the dream work. Well, now now my now my score sheet is just ruined. Sorry. You, you hate to see you hate to see it, folks. Sorry. 10 17 left to go in the third period. It's a three to two game as the rest talk with Coach Dylan Muth. It's not uh not pleased about the call, apparently. I don't I'm not sure. I, I missed the penalty. But the non-call should have been should have been called. It was a pretty egregious attempt at a hit by a diminutive player on a not a tall player, but a player much taller than the aggressor. Yes. Uh, I guess the intent was there, but the uh, execution failed. Yeah, I don't know if you could call it a penalty if the fraction never technically it, happened. Yeah, right? You could actually take a swing at a guy, but if you miss, it's not a penalty. I don't know. Yeah. Interesting. We'll see how this works out. This one by the Cougars. They're on the power play, three to two. Great row. Oh, he can't keep it in. Into the neutral zone. Back to Henson. Back to Rowe. Back to Henson. Henson steps up, steps across, down to the far boards. He played to his own man. I'll try and attempt a centering pass. Loose puck is just going to ping pong between the skates. Yeah, I'm high not, spot area. Now I'm not over quite sure that's how the power play was drawn up. Oh, and a poor move there by Everett Salt. He'll clear the puck out into the McKendry bench. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the good people at JJ Thermos for everything they do. They make all of this happen. They you know, they make the jerseys happen. They make Geek at the Rink Night happen, and they're just a fantastic people to work with. So big old thank you to J.J. Thermos. Go out and give them your business if you're feeling some good food over at the Eastgate Plaza. SIUE is going to play the puck over to the oh. near board shot wide. It'll be grabbed by Eversault. Eversault along the far corner. It's looking. He's going to send the pass over to Rowe. Rowe. Fakes his shot, but he's going to deal, deal it over to the far boards. Back to Rowe now. Rowe standing centered on the blue line. Is now switching positions. Is Perry with a shot and a glove saved by Young. Looks, uh, looks a little telegraphed on the power play right here. Looks like they're gripping the sticks a little tight, and they're up one. Uh, it's, this is a team that's had the majority of the pressure went up. Well, really went even, even strength. Now with their upper man, they they really have them at their mercy. It just it just looks like they're they're trying too hard to stick to their game, and it's the plays can be read. And if if the defensive team knows what you're doing, it's going to make the kill a lot more easier for them. I'm nowhere as near as smart as the hold oh, mound back up to Kolebert. Kolebert shoots wide. I'm nowhere as near as smart as, as the minds on the bench here, but when I can read where you're going to go with the puck next, it might be a small problem. As Kakanasian misses on it, exiting the zone. And breaking right back in. Corey Sperry across the line. Sperry looks to find Tacmasian. Tacmasian lets it go over to Simon. Simon kicks it over to Wagner. 
Wagner back up to Simon. To Cola Burke. He keeps it on side. Shot. Save made by Young. Oh, and a little push there by Gay right at the whistle. It's good, uh, good net from presence there by uh, by Sperry. He likes to get in the mix. Uh, just hopefully he can toe the line here and, and not uh, go back in the box. Um, but yeah, being right in front of the net, you got to be a got to be a physical presence in front. Try and block out the sun for those shots from the point. Three seconds left to go on the power play, and a shot is going to be stepped in front of by the Bearcats as the puck will roll over now. Grab by Paris. Paris now plays it up along the far boards over to Zerlini. Zerlini plays it around the ref, and he'll dump it in. And you can feel the force of the hits coming in here. These teams are very done with each other after this uh, this weekend. There's still eight minutes left to go. One goal game, three to two. About eight minutes remaining in the third period. As the puck will be broken out into the defensive zone of the Cougars, it'll be chased over by Drew LaRose. One thing you got to take note of here is we have the fourth line out there with, with a one goal game with eight minutes left. That's how confident he feels in uh, the coaches feel. In that fourth line, I I will say the Cougars have have some solid depth this season. Craig Ford, Bryce Simon, Corey Sperry, Austin Zerlini—they've all been all up and down the uh, all up and down the score sheet, the uh, lines here. Uh, they've all produced fairly well so far as the Cougars roll the puck around. Oh, a centery pass can't find a man. It'll roll over into the neutral zone. So seven minutes left to go. Cougars do they do run four lines deep, and that's a that's a very positive thing. Oh, an interference call! Looks like it'll be a Blake Technation. That's a very uh, oh, and he gives him a ten to boot. Oh, ten minutes for complaining. I'm not sure. Uh, at this juncture of the game, that that should be a call. Uh, there wasn't, there wasn't much there. Two players collided. One guy fell. I, uh, and now it, le it leads to a uh, a top six forward exiting the game. He, he needs to cool his temper for sure. Well, that's that's, th that's not on the ref, but the the penalty is the, the initial call is brutal. Face off one by the Bearcats. They're going to roll the puck up along the far boards. Carry around there. Now played up to Gay. Gay loses control of it over to Wolf. Wolf in the neutral zone as the Bearcats vacate. That's Hack Nation's third penalty tonight. And I don't care how you know, weak or strong the calls are. You don't want three. Oh, Corey's very intercepted pass. Shot wide of the net. And I think the Nets off its moorings here as the play continues on into the neutral zone. Oh, a huge hit check there from Cade Henson. Takes a man down. Yeah, the Cougars will clear the puck the length of the ice. Minute 19 left to go on this kill. I don't know if he's got, like, rubber attached to his jersey, but he is destroying kids out here. Put a little flex seal on the jersey. Just watch it bounce off, right? That's a lot of damage as the Bearcats now... Roll the puck along to Gay up along the near boards. Non-call on Blandina exiting the zone there. That hit was made with his feet, not with his body. Here goes Scrum behind the net. He's going to look up. There's Nelson wide open at the point, but there's too many Cougars in the way. Now a shot from Nelson. Save made by Curry. It's a great save by Curry. Gets the whistle. 47 seconds left on the kill. Calms the guys down. Big stop by him. This is probably one of the tighter games that he's played in all year. Face off one by the Bearcat shot. Oh, and it's going to go well wide off of a leg. Cleared now by Braden Rowe. And a little bit of a pinball effect. Hit a couple legs in front. That's tough to track, especially a puck going that rate of speed. Hey, here comes Esther Meyer. Henry pass. Oh boy, it almost found somebody there. That was a dangerous chance. Chris Meyer having a making himself known that he's back out on the ice after that a very scary incident in the middle of the second period. Well, move put on by Scrum shot, and it's a save made as the puck will get redirected to the Bearcats. Steps up the high slot, shot. Oh, it's gonna hit the gates behind Curry here. 
Pass now to the blue line. Shot from Eric Stemeyer, and it's going to go wide off of a stick or two. Man goes down along the boards as the puckle ping pong off some legs and some sticks. Now a shot from there, save made by Curry. Big save. Note the rebound control. He's the, his, on the, the plays that he's able to use his hands. He's catching them on shots that are down low. He's putting them into the corner. So good on Curry to help his defense out right here. Shot save made by Curry there. And a weak shot as the Cougars step across the blue line into the neutral zone. Now played up to Sperry. Sperry tries to sit in pass, but he can't fight it. There's a play. Puck will roll over. The lock finds the elder Kohler Burke. Is it'll get poked forward. He, the Cougars just not playing with a whole lot of a whole lot of oof right now, but. Four minutes left to go. They're killing a little bit of time. Now, shut! Oh, oh, he shut the five hole. I thought that might have gone through the lane. Shut the front door. I can't believe that didn't get in. He, again, missed it with a stick. It stuck under his pads. Uh, for Turudis, uh save there by, by the McKendry netminder right there. You can see it bounce off of the inside of Young's leg. Yeah. And usually, if you can see that, that's, you know, it's, it's done. But he shut the front door. He shut the back door. Closed those skates up on the back end. <laughs> Five hole trap from Jacques Lecoq, uh, the, uh, the terrible movie, Mike Myers movie. That's a bad <laughs> reference, my bad. Oh, uh, what? Jacques what, Lecoq Grande is the guy's name. Uh, Justin Timberlake is in the movie. He's a goalie. Love Guru. Love Guru. Dang it. I almost had it too. McKendry across the blue line into the neutral zone. Oh, a huge hit on Bielicki by Kyle Kolaber. He's okay. almost exclusively going with hip checks this weekend. It's amazing how many landed hip checks he's he's attempted and uh, executed on. Yo, know, hip checks are not they're not super easy to make. It's very easy to whiff on. It. Here's Kyle Kolaberk now. Turns up, turns around. He plays the puck into the neutral zone. Seem to watch a lot of Bob Plager videos, and uh, he's all over the hip hippers. Right now. Oh, would you look at Bryce Simon absorb that check? That Terrence Curry. Oh, he. He's trying to find some space, and it will come eventually. Yes, here we go. Christian Perry over to the far board. Shot. In a diving save. Great play there by Garrett Poole. Puck now rolled over into the neutral, into the, excuse me, into the slot area, and now dumped into the neutral zone. And he'll get chased after by Chris Wagner. Waved off for icing. His scrum is right there. He's going to absorb a hit and play it to his own man. Centering pass, and nothing doing of that pass for, to Adam Dipsky. Dibsky tries another searing pass. Again, nobody's there right in front of the netminder for those passes. Eversol makes a very underrated play there. He didn't have a stick and makes a, a little soccer play to end up getting the puck out to his uh, his forward. 223 to go. Shot. Oh, has a golden chance there for the SIU Cougars. Developed just a little too close to the net now as they'll dump it in. Hands up for icing. That'll be whistled dead. With two minutes and 11 seconds left to go in the third, if you can hang on, this is a signature weekend for you as a club. Oh, for sure. This is a it's a big rivalry weekend for uh, for this team. It's big points on the line in the conference, and you get these four points. It's it could be the matter of with how tight the MACHA is. It could be the matter of being second or being fourth going into the playoffs. So it, it could dramatically. Oh, hold on, hold on now. We got a ref down. Reese Ramirez is walking out. Take a look at him. Referee down on the ice. I don't know if his batteries died or if his, he blew an edge. I'm not sure what happened. I just looked over and he's down on the ice. That's that's terrible to see. Yeah. He's not moving a whole lot. and He must have slammed his head into the ice pretty severely. Okay, so he's going to sit up now. Looks to be a line judge. Sometimes you fall down on the ice and it's like, oh, I've, that's... I can't skate, and like you're down in shame. Yeah, this doesn't look to be one of those issues. No, like you're almost kind of poking fun at yourself when you do that. But this isn't. Yeah, this not. This just does this doesn't look good. No. Well, you you hate to see a referee, you know, that get injured in the line of duty. They're not here to get hit. You know, they're here to call a fair game. Yeah. Between the amount of abuse they take from 
just getting hit. How many pucks have we seen just hit them today? Yeah. The amount of abuse they get from the fans. I mean, at every hockey game, you yell at them. Yeah. So it's it's <laughs> it's, it's part of the well, and you know they get abuse from the coaches as well. Coaches. I think we I think I've abused them twice already yeah. <laughs> so this game. So it's one of those things. It's, that's a it's a a thankless job, and they they're doing the best they can at the end of the day. Face off one shot from Northrop. Save me by Curry. Looks like our line judge will be just okay. He's re entering play here and now up and across. That's Trevor Daly. Daly finds a man to Cole Eversol. Eversol loses control of it. And now going the other way is Dinsky. Dinsky with a two on two shot. Save me by Curry. And I got to question that shot selection at that juncture. Oh no. And now we have another man down that looks to be Derek Northrop. He'll be all right. Went down. He's slow to get back up, but uh, he'll be. He'll be right back into play. There was nothing there. I'm sorry. He'll be fine. Minute 50 left to go in the third period. At this point, I just want to get out of this with any more additional injuries to anybody here. Yeah, normally the late games on a Saturday night, the refs are trying to get to fast Eddie's. Oh, it is shot off the post. We're now JJ Thermos. Here we go the other way. Christian Perry. Perry centering pass. Oh, it's going to be trying to be poked forward by Bryce Simon, but he just can't just stick on it as the puck will roll. Now into the neutral zone. You got a minute and a half left of the game. Perry, oh, just a skate offside. Minute 26 to go in the third period. Face off will be at center ice here. As the Cougars with the face off, now we be dished back to Caden Hinson. You got to think you're going to see an empty cage here with the buck 20 left in the game. Yeah, I, I don't see a reason why not to. The there, he goes. there he goes. And so it's a six on five. A man advantage to the McKendry Bearcats. It'll be dealt all the way down. <laughs> here comes not the goalie quite. back out. Yeah. Thought better of it. He wanted to just make the skate. He's not getting enough work after 48 shots. He just uh, skated all the way there and all the way back. You know, that's such an easy skate to do, <laughs> said nobody. Yeah. <laughs> Buck now up to Christian Perry. Perry now. Oh, he's going to get taken down along the near boards. No hands up, that's... though. There's a stick involved there, and that was, might have been a penalty. Dipsky now across the blue line. It's a two-on-two. Two. He's going to be flat outside. By Chris Wagner. One of the more obvious calls not called. Wolf in the neutral zone feels the puck after it's cleared by the Cougars. They had advantage. There's an offside call on the Kendry Bearcats. 28.6 left. The refs apparently put the whistles away. and Let them finish. Yeah. Let the boys finish out the last minute on their own. Yeah. Stick, stick was parallel. <laughs> Man went down. There, that's that's almost textbook. Uh, a textbook call. If, the, if, the, if it was the NHL, it's probably a double minor for how parallel the guy's stick was. Well, you know, the, 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 is, we, we just talked about giving the refs, and and here you the go. The game hasn't ended yet, so we can still do it. Okay, that's he's fair. fine. We can still give him guff. He's fine. He's fine. <laughs> you know what? Uh, he's available for guff giving because he's skating. Well, you know, he's wearing the stripes, right? Like uh, that comes with the job. Never been a fan of zebras. Uh, so you're more of a giraffe guy. Or I'm a more giraffe a, guy myself. So I don't like things. Maybe like a hippo or. Yeah. I like to think of myself as a hippo out on the ice. Cause I do believe they do. <laughs> I do believe they're a natural predator of zebras. If I'm not mistaken. <laughs> zebras. Uh, I don't know. Right now they look to cower in shame <laughs> out here on the ice. They don't really run very well. How does one get from the Serengeti to the ice of East Dalton? That's what I, I'm wondering. That's a, I think that's what the movie Madagascar was that's about. That's a documentary right? documentary nar narrated by Morgan Freeman uh, th that I want to see. It's late, folks. We don't know what we're talking about anymore as the Cougars win the faceoff. Hey, Kate Hinson plays it now behind the net. You got 20 seconds left. Kate Hinson just perfectly okay to just pin it up against the board there, but McKendry's going to fire it off from the circle. It'll be stepped in front of, and it's going to go out into the neutral zone. No, 10 seconds left. And SIUE is going to know on that shot by Lucas Tucker. It's going to be wide of the net. Cougars got one man on the pressure. And there's the horn. Cougars with two huge victories on back-to-back -back nights. 
They'll take the victory 3-2 to two tonight. They took the victory 3-2 to two last night. And yeah, there's a little extracurriculars going on there at Center Eyes. I don't think there's going to be a handshake at this point. Two teams don't like each other. The Cougars just put up two on the McKendry Bearcats. i got to tell you what, that's an admirable game to play by McKendry. They hung in there and uh, and uh, gave them a game. They were some, If it weren't for their goaltender, they were severely outplayed and it shouldn't have been that close. Um, but they, they hung in there, made it a game, had a 2 nothing lead at one point, and uh, unfortunately for SIUE, they came back, had a big third period. They had about a five-minute flurry of goals, and uh, that was enough to win the 60 Mickey game. Yep. Let, let's talk about uh, three stars for tonight. Uh, I think you're going to – we always give it to the goalies, but I feel like the goalies have deserved it again in this game. So uh, where do you feel about slotting in Caleb Curry? Curry's got to be – well, he's ahead of Young. He's the winner. Um, so I'm going to put him, I'm going to put me as the second star. I think Christian Perry would be your first star. He scored a goal. He drew a penalty there. And I believe he had another assist on the night. I would believe that he had another assist on the night for sure. Yeah. Um, goals, uh, the goal, the drawing, the penalty of the goal that tied it and probably an assist on that tying goal. Uh, and he just created so many chances. So we're going to go Perry. Curry. He was, he was the best player on the ice. Yeah. Curry, Curry, and uh, let's give the net last one to Mason Young in that for the McKendry Bear Pats. Yep. Again, without him, that's uh, this game isn't close. Made, made possibly the save of the year that'll happen at this arena. Uh, just a brilliant save in the middle of the second period. Saved it for being what would eventually be a 4-2 game. It, uh, so once again, Perry, Curry, Young. Goals for the Cougars by Perry, Ebersol, and Marshall. Goals for the Bearcats by Kolovko in North Rock. I think that's going to just about wrap it up for us here at SIUE Hockey. We thank you for joining us. If you have a pair of games coming up in the next week, stay tuned to our YouTube channel, our Facebook, our Twitter. We'll give you guys updates. We got some videos, maybe some interviews we're going to do. We talked about interviewing Kane Henson, but uh, we had a cable break, so we're going to try give that another try just to get to know the player kind of segment this uh this week, and it should be a fun time. I'm Luke Clevenger. It's Casey Kitchelinski. And you're, this was SIUE Cougar Hockey.